going to take to put a first coat of gloss on the white top sides. And you got to remember, I don't know if I can explain this right, when you're taping, this top line will go on real good. But if I was taping over the white to do the varnish, it would wrinkle. See these little wrinkles? You gotta really press them down with a, I use a little wooden tongue depressor. But sometimes that doesn't work, so you really, you really uh, have to be very careful because it'll, it'll bleed on you. Is that when you might consider using the 3M blue stretchy tape? Yeah, if I could get it on straight. The stretchier the tape, the less that it will um, do that. See, I don't mind the little places on the tape now. Yeah, because we're painting the white above the... Usually this light green 3M tape if it turns transparent, then it's down pretty good. But the 3M fine line tape, you can get that in all. You can even get that in eighth inch and three sixteenths. That might go around better. I use it once in a while, but not too often. The second row of tape is well, just for brush overlap. Sometimes taping, you just have to, uh, if, if I was painting this whole hull, I would pa paint the bottom first, because I know I can tape this way and get a good line for the, for the top, and I might be able to hide any places that bled, if that makes sense. Yeah better to bleed on the top sides because it's easier to tape the top sides. Also, if you're painting the whole hull and you have a little bleed through, if you're very careful with a real small artist brush, you can try to retape a little places and touch up. I've done that many times. This will probably take a minimum of three coats of gloss. As you can see, this is the first coat of gloss going on now. That's all primer that's been sanded. A little sandbag that some people have asked about. I'm still waiting. I put a rub rail on it. I don't know if anyone really saw that. And I'm just waiting for them to... Uh, Send me more plans. So that's kind of on the back burner for now. So, what gloss paint are you going to use? The one shot or the monourethane? The one shot. It's a little more expensive, but. It covers the best, and if I was going to use a regular paint, the paint I'd use the bright side Matterhorn white. It's not cheap, but it's way cheaper than one shot. But it does cover real good. Why not the mono year thing? Because of the dry time. No, long? because it doesn't cover as good. Oh, okay. I don't know how hard it is to get one shot paint. It's pretty easy to have at most hardware stores, don't they? No. No? No, no. They don't have any. There used to be a, I think it's still there, an art supply store in Mashpee Commons. When you go down 151, it's to the right, not into the main common area. And the same entrance probably is that big supermarket. And they used to have one-shot paints there. Well, probably most of the people following us are spread out around the country, so 
What about like that Michael's art supply store? Do you think they have one shot there? No. That's a nationwide. I don't think so. I I was just in there a couple of days ago, bought some brushes, but I did not look. Well, you can get it on Amazon. Guess I'm gonna use cherry. Yeah, we're gonna get. We don't have any videos of any working on the plaques. We'll have to get some. Remember, I, I did say at one time, don't have too much paint on your brush when you're cutting to the molding. It's kind of a trial by error. Too much paint and it rolls up on it. Just get the excess off right below where you're cutting in. Just like that. When I sand this gloss the first time, I will probably uh, maybe use like a 1200 grit paper. Hopefully not much dirt gets in it, then it's a lot easier to sand. But you're better off to use wet paper on gloss. You can use a finer grit than you normally would with dry paper. And if you use a little bit of soap in the bottle, spray bottle, make sure that you uh, rinse it real good before you uh, put another coat on. Got a few white spatters I can see on the keel here. They would sand off, but they're a lot better to get them wiped off. So what you were doing just there is called cross brushing. It's what you do with um, yeah, just a less less of a chance of maybe getting a run or a holiday if you cross brush. But in real hot weather, you can't do it. If it sets up too fast. Well, most people probably have a climate controlled workshop, I think. Well, inside a cellar, it wouldn't. Yeah. Let me see one place I got a wipe.
to sand that off. Sometimes I leave the tape on. The reason I come on. Jeez. <laughs> I wanted to check here. A lot of times this is where it bleeds where the stem meets the hull. Plus I oh I got some paint on the bottom here. That's what the second roll of tape was for. Yeah. Some, better to not have to worry about it. Sometimes I need four rolls of tape. <laughs> the more that you put on, the less you have to worry about it when you're brushing. You can worry about getting it even and not cutting it in. So feel free to always put extra rolls of tape. Okay. It's got a little fine dirt in it, but... So you're thinking at least, um, at least three coats of white, right? White gloss. I don't know if I can do this with just two more coats. We'll see if what I do there. Uh, all right. I probably I may end up putting three yeah. more on this. You got a fish eye. Oh, yeah. Right. I think uh, I think that's a little imperfection. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Shape of the show. One of so, the videos Betsy and I did, we asked if anyone had their opinion on the, if I should use cherry for the plaque or some other wood. So, yeah, nobody has left any comments. Leave a comment, and tell us what you think. What are the choices other than cherry? Well, mahogany, but. The bottom's mahogany, it wouldn't be too much contrast, but it would still look good. Yeah. I'm probably going to just use cherry. What about that other stuff that you have? What do you call it? Zebra wood? Is that what it was called? Monkey paw. Monkey, yeah, monkey. I have some walnut. The cherry's nice. These nylon bristle brushes are really, really good brushes for this kind of work. Just don't leave them soaking for too long because the solvents will ruin the nylon and mm -hmm. leave them at an angle clipped with a clip like Malcolm's got there so the bristles aren't touching the bottom of the pot. They're great brushes though. Okay, I think that's it for tonight. Okay, great. So the next time we'll be wet sanding and doing a second coat on the gloss. Well, I don't know if they want to see another coat. But... Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay, thanks.